going on damn YouTube, okay? How are you motherfuckers doing on this Monday evening, bitch? It is almost 8 motherfucking 30 up in this motherfucker, okay? Some of y'all like, bitch, it's 30. It still looks like it's daylight outside. Motherfucker, you know how daylight savings go in the motherfucking damn summertime. But anyway, we ain't even talking about the goddamn weather and the goddamn daylight saving shit because I'm not a fucking anchor woman, weather person, whatever the hell. No, that ain't my thing. Anyway, though, without any further ado, I am here tonight to give y'all my review of motherfucking Love and Hip Hop Atlanta season six, 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 uh, Club God. No, wait a minute. Hold on. That's motherfucking Drake. So I mean, I meant to say in the six with my, wo in the woes with my six. Six, whatever the fuck. Anyway, season six, episode 12, Jamaican motherfucking flavor. Jamaican flavor, my bow, 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 shabba, bow, bow, bitch. Fuck out of here. Fuck, fuck you mean. Okay, without any further ado, damn, I, I honestly feel like though, Love and Hip Hop ain't even been on for a minute because of the holidays last week. So they didn't show the uh, episode that was supposed to come on, not today, but last week. But, you know, because of the holiday. But they play T.I. and Tiny, though. Okay. But anyway, without any further ado, we get back to where we left off. At Carly and her uh, clothing store, whatever. Um, Jock is there. Coming up in here with this black and white plaid ass uh, dress on. Looking like the black, some black leprechaun. Irish dude or some shit with this damn perm he still got in his motherfucking hand. I got a damn perm. This motherfucker, I don't know. I don't even know that's his real hair. I don't even know. I don't even know. I don't even know what the fuck is that shit up in his head. You know, I, what the fuck is that? Somebody please tell me. But anyway, we just gonna leave the perm alone. Jock is there. Dime is there. And her man. And Melissa is there with Estelina. Margarita, whatever her name is. And here comes in. Carly Red and Little Caesars Pizza from Black Ink Crew. Ugh, glass. Um, what happened? Uh, so, Jock, he was in his feelings and shit because Carly is with Little Caesars Pizza. So, um, Carly is just introducing Little Caesars Pizza to everybody and everything. And Jock, he ain't really feeling that shit. <sighs> he told everybody, you know. I ain't here for all that, I, you know what I'm saying? She gonna, she gonna show you the real her in 90 days and all that type of stuff. He gonna say in the damn confessionals. I was gone. He gonna say in the damn confessionals. Um, <laughs> he gonna say in the damn confessionals. Uh, he can, he can, she can go on over there with his little tattoo needle. You know, I got a, I got a big needle and it go deep. I'm like, zzz, 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 zzz. Dead, bitch. Flatline out of here. What the hell going on? Good night. Shit. Fuck out of here. Anyway, though. So, when wasn't really too much that happened in that scene. Oh, Estelina, she came, like I told you, she came with Melissa to, the, uh, to Carly's clothing store. And as we all know, Carly ain't really feeling Estelina Margarita like that. So, you know, Estelina, she kind of threw a little bit of shade. You know, we both practically the same age. 40, 50, buy one, get one free, whatever the fuck she said. Carly got mad. You know, bam. Nothing really happened too much. So, move on to the next scene. We go into Rashida's store, pressed, or shall I say stressed, with all the damn shit that's been going on with her and damn Kirk motherfucking Frost ass. Ugh. Scripted or not, it's getting on my nerve, my damn self. So, anyway... What's going on here? So, this dude, Logan, comes up in here. I'm like, yo, who the hell is this? Who is that nigga? Okay, so Logan comes up in there. But she's like, you know, you know, can I help you with some shit? He was like, no, nah, I came to see you. You know what I'm saying? I came to see you. So, basically, comes to find out Logan is uh, old girl Jasmine's ex. And they was together, hell, not recently, but, you know, they, they known each other since, like, 2012. 2013, some shit like that. So, um, basically, they was together, and she got pregnant, 
and come to find out things didn't, uh, you know, wasn't happy, happily ever fucking after for them two. They broke the fuck up. He was with somebody else. She got mad and told him, I'm getting an abortion. I'm getting an abortion. And, you know, had a whole damn fit and all that type of stuff. And, you know, then he heard about this whole thing with her and Kirk and allegedly the baby being cursed. But, you know, at the same time, he not, Logan ain't sure if Jasmine got a real damn uh, abortion. So he wants to know if Cannon is his. And speaking of Cannon, because that's the baby's name, Cannon, he says, is his, is his dead father's name. I said, so this bitch is a sneaky, conniving ass bitch. You gonna name your child after your ex's dead father. Bitch, you just, you just wrong, bitch. What the hell is wrong with you? What the hell, you trying to get some damn alimony or uh, death money? I, shit, I don't know. Anyway, though, we get on that. And uh, basically, Rashida is saying she want to eliminate uh, people who, would, you know, could allegedly be the father. So she want a oh boy to get a task and then she, we going to work on Kirk ass. So she said, when you get a damn T, D, T, when you get a damn DNA test, when you see what Dana say, DNA, Dana, um, come back to press, a.k.a. stress, to her store and all that, and, you know, let her know. So, woo, we fast forward to the next damn scene after all these damn commercials and shit, because, you know, BH1 and every other damn channel got hella fucking commercials, okay? Damn. Um, the fuck? Um, we get to Carly, I think Mimi. And this new girl, uh, shit, I forgot her damn name. She got blue hair and shit, you know. Uh, she looked like a black, attractive version of, uh, like, a Smurf or some shit. If the, if the Smurfs was, if, uh, if the Smurfs, if the Smurfs was urban or some shit. We get to her, she and she, she like a rap queen of Jamaica. Bow, bow, shabba, shabba, bow, bow, bow. You know what I'm saying? Bumba clot. What a guan. Dirty wine, head ass. Um, so, you know, they getting their shit up in the damn car and shit. And Carly was saying that, you know, they came a day earlier to do this and that and blah, 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 blah. Okay? Wasn't really too much that, you know, we learned from there other than the girl with the blue hair and all that type of shit. Chang, chang, bang, bang. Ching, chang, chang. That's Chinese. Damn, hit my fucking hand. I'm fucking fan. This goddamn motherfucking fan heater thing. All right. That seems out the way we get to Tammy and Waka Flocka. Waka ass trying to move some clothes up in the closet and shit. Look like a damn basket of clothes that need to be up in a damn washer or some shit like that. I don't know what the hell is going on. And, uh, you know, Waka was basically saying, you know, he got to sleep on the couch still, but he's still glad that he's in the damn house. And, uh, you know, he was noticing that, you know what I'm saying, uh, Tammy asked, she don't be at home, she don't be at home by the time dinner ready and shit, and come to find out that she up in the studio with some rappers, you know, she was trying to make her mad or some shit like that, but in reality, she with one of his close dudes, Rico Love, shout out to Rico Love, by the way, they don't know, they don't, they don't know, they don't, th y'all know that damn song, bam, bam, Bomba clock, Rico, Rico, Bomba clock, what the gun, Dante wine, chow, 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 bow, 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 shabba. So, Tammy's in the damn studio. She's making a song. This thing is called All These Kisses and stuff. We need all, all these kisses. We up in the room. You know what to do. Ooh, I don't know how the damn song go, but you get it. Um,. But, yeah, Flocka is basically trying to do any and everything to get on Tammy's good side. So, yeah, they have a cute-ass French bulldog, by the way. So, boom, clock, boom. So, uh, yeah, she up in the studio working on her shit and everything like that. And, uh, like I said, Walker is trying to do any and everything to get on Tammy's good side. And it looks like, you know, it's working. You know, she not going to... Let her guard down all the way. But you know where, you know what I'm saying. You know where this is going. So, bam. Hold on. 
because this was a long ass episode. I'm just trying to see what the hell happened. Um, hold on. Oh, that's right. So, down in the A, Rashida takes her ass on to LLG. Damn it, I done fucked up. On to OLG. She takes her ass on OLG, Old Lady Gang. Uh, that's Candy, uh, her restaurant, along with her aunts and stuff, and her mama, one of my favorite damn housewives on the Real Housewives of Atlanta. What's up, Candy Birds girl? I fly above, ball hey, I fly above, I, I fly, okay. But yeah, so she ba Rashida's basically telling Candy that, uh, you know, Logie Logue come up up in her store and I think I just like had a glitch come up up I meant to say come up in the store and you know tell him what tell her what the business is and so you know Candy she just listening and everything and you know Logan was talking about getting a paternity test but that's one thing that uh she can't get Kirk to do Take a damn DNA test, dumbass motherfucker. You study sitting over here wondering, oh, is this my child? Is this my child? Motherfucker, take a damn test. See what Dana say, and then bam. You know what I mean? Like, why are you acting like a dumbass, you know? Like, it's just stupid as hell. You study wondering, all you got to do is take your ass down to the motherfucking clinic, whatever the fuck you got to do, and see if that's your child or not, instead of work wasting, okay, people's time. So, you know... Where she was telling Candy about this Jamaica trip, and she wasn't too sure about going. And Candy somehow convinced her to get her ass up and get on the plane and go to the motherfucking Jamaica Island, okay? Who in the hell would miss Jamaica? Jamaica, Jamaica, okay? Come on, man. We already know what that shit is. Don't act like you wouldn't motherfucking go to goddamn, um, what was I going to say? To goddamn... I don't know, to the motherland. Chaba, 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 chaba. But, uh, yeah, so, quick scene real quick. She just wanted to, you know, have a little chit-chat, go to old lady gang, get some shit to eat, you know what I'm saying? Boom, bam, boom. woo de woo woo de wham We moving on to the next scene. So, now, we got Carly Red and Mimi meeting at this damn Jamaican dinner. They got all the Jamaican candles and lights lit the fuck up. It's about to be bumba clot lit. What a guan shaba! And I'm not making fun of no damn body. So, Carly Red, as usual, being messy as hell. Messy as Carly, bitch. Me Carly, you messy, bitch. You was one messy, bitch. <laughs> you was one messy, bitch, okay? Good night. Um... She was basically saying, you know, we came a day earlier to get some drama out the way. Mimi doesn't know, however, that I invited Melissa so they can hash out their problems. Blah, 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 blah. Okay? But, however, when Melissa walked her ass up to the damn Jamaican spot table dinner thing, Mimi asked, you know, she she didn't look too, too thrilled with that shit. She didn't look too thrilled and she didn't look too, uh... You know, like I said, she didn't look too thrilled. She didn't want to see Melissa's ass. But, hey. So, Melissa was basically trying to say, like, look, you know, when I used to be around, I used to smile and stuff. Now you barely, now you looking at me like you want to kill me or some shit. It shouldn't have to be like that. We should, you know, we should we should be able to get along and all that type of stuff. And just because, because Mimi is still butthurt that Melissa is cool with Jocelyn. But, however, Mimi don't fuck with Jocelyn. I don't blame her, but at the same time, if Melissa ain't out here being a messy ass bitch, talking shit about Mimi to Jocelyn or anybody else, then you shouldn't be butthurt about it. Because Melissa done said several fucking times on these past episodes, you know, it's no disrespectful shit that's being said about you to her from Melissa's mouth, okay? So why are you so damn mad? Oh, I don't get it at all. I don't get it. I don't get it. Mimi, bitch, you know, and let me tell you something, Mimi, I don't know who the hell you went to to get your titties done, but girl, leave that shit alone, okay, leave it the fuck alone, because you don't need nothing else, I mean, I'm sorry, but your titties is walking around here, I mean, stuck up there, looking like some damn 
gummy ass hamburger buns, okay? Serving me real food versus gummy food cheese, okay? It looks a hot ass mess. You didn't even need no damn work done. Well, the first time you got something done, you should have left it. You should have left it alone. Okay, you should left on. Now your damn titties walking around here looking like some hamburger buns on steroids or some thick ass, gummy ass, unchewable ass cookie damn dough. Okay, ain't nobody gonna eat them motherfuckers. You can't put gummy ass cookies in motherfucking milk, bitch. That shit is just gonna float up in the damn milk. It's gonna look like a fucking bathtub toy. You might as well name that. You might as well put that motherfucker, put, put, put them two motherfuckers in the damn water and let them motherfuckers just sit there and float. Okay, because that's what the fuck that shit looks like. Instead of you being butt hurt <clears throat> about Melissa being cool with Jocelyn, you need to be butt hurt about the motherfucking cosmetic surgeon who fucked your titties up, okay? Like I said, they walk around here looking like cookies on steroids. Cookies, some in some inflatable ass cookie balloons out this bitch, okay? They look you look like if you could you could pick up any sharp pointy material you will have the motherfuckers popped and all the fucking air from your titties is gonna bust up in your motherfucking face and you ain't gonna be able to do shit about it shit a motherfucking about it okay and it's crazy so Mimi I mean at the end of the day you can really get over Melissa being cool with Jocelyn like I said and like she said as long as she ain't talking about you to Jocelyn so Jocelyn can sit up there and kiki and laugh and talk about how she's the baddest bitch and she's the Puerto Rican fucking princess motherfucking princess motherfucker, okay? Then you should be cool and act like you grown and act like you got some damn sense. And stop being butthurt at her and be butthurt at that damn cosmetic surgeon like I motherfucking say a bitch. Because your damn titties is walking around here looking like, like I said, looking like some damn fluffy ass, unchewable ass, inflatable ass cookies. Hamburger buns, bitch. Disgusting. Get out of my damn face. Moving on, next scene. Um, so we get Flocker. We got Kirk Frost. We got Jock and we got Dude. That's what uh, Dime Piece. I forgot what his name is. They all up in here playing basketball and shit. Bam, boom, bam. After that, they get to talking about, you know, the girls and stuff. The guy has his teasing Jock because we all know Jock has a thing for Carly Red, even though she messy as fuck and she always got her head up in somebody else's damn business. Who the hell is texting me while I'm making a damn video? Anyway, um, they teasing, uh, like I said, they teasing Jock about Carly Red. However, though, Jock was still a little bit in his feelings and he was like, "You look, you look, you look." Um, he she can have Caesar, boom, bam, boom. So for some reason we get on, we get on the whole Jamaica trip. Flock or somebody brings up the Jamaica trip, and basically they was all agreeing. Uh, Kirk, Jock, and Flocka and Dude, um, Dimes Dude, to go um sneak up on and creep up on them in Jamaica. And, you know, Kurt was like, you know, last time I digged up on Rashida, you know, it didn't go so well. Or whatever the fuck he said. Because you and Rashida ain't here. Y'all used to be here, but now y'all ain't here. So together, y'all ain't here. Hear that. Anyway, so, like I said, they, uh, they plan on going to motherfucking Jamaica, Jamaica. Okay? So... Next motherfucking scene. We get Carly Rae, Tammy, Mimi, a uh, bunch of big booty bitches taking pictures and shit on the Jamaican beach and everything. Basically, they got a Jamaican Playboy thing going on, taking photos in these damn new ass, colorful ass swimsuits and shit. They having a good ass time, that kind of thing. Um. So Mimi, Carly, and Tammy, after they take these pictures and shit, they all talking and shit on the beach. You know, having a good time, blah, 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 blah. Before you know it, um, Jessica Dime comes out. You know, she got this bright-ass green swimsuit on. 
It looked, she looked like some kind of a sexual ass superhero or some shit. And, uh, you know, she come out and, you know, Tammy was bringing up the whole situation of when Jessica had got mad at Tammy for interrupting her or whatever at, uh, Tommy's little drinking thing, you know, so. Uh, basically, they had hashed, they, they, they squashed their little, little beef. It wasn't really a beef, though, so. You know, I mean, because Jessica, Jessica said, I think she overreacted a little bit. Jessica, I think you should stay with your, like, the black hair. I mean, you don't look bad with the pink, but you look better with, um, the black and everything. Oh, and Melissa, she came out with dime as well. So, um, what the hell else happened? Boom, bam, boom. Oh, yeah, Melissa, she talking about the whole thing with Mimi again. You know, even though you're not messing with me, um... I'm still messing with you. We should be cool. Blah, 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 blah. Get back to Tammy and uh, Jessica a bit. So, another reason why Jessica was feeling type of way because, um, well, let's get, before we get to her, Tammy, her daughter, Charlie, had like some pink in her hair. And somebody had commented on Instagram, you know, she a little, she, she too young for some dye in her hair and she trying to be grown and blah, 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 blah. And Tammy had said, it's fine for an 11-year-old girl to wear, you know, have some color in her hair, or pink, you know, have pink hair, but somebody in their 30s or whatever, basically a grown-ass woman, should not be walking around wearing pink hair, and Tammy was like, Jessica felt that I was, she was talking about her and some shit like that. You know, nothing, nothing too major, so, um, coming into the last scene, you know, everybody talking, oh yeah, Rashida, she comes out. She comes out, she's the last person to come on the beach, and basically she's just telling everybody what's been done at, uh, when little Logie Lo came to her store. And, uh, you know, Carly's like, oh my God, what the fuck, what the fuck, you know, like, you know, she was like, like, she was gonna, you know, go tell somebody else, somebody else's damn business or something. I don't know what the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, we get to the last motherfucking scene. Here go old girl again with the damn, the blue hair and shit. She got her, like, chandelier um, costume on, uh, chandelier costume outfit on. You know, she, sha ba la ba ba sha da 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 twerk it, twerk it, bow bow, shoot that, shoot that, shoot that, boot that, boot that, cloot that, bam ba gla, what the guan, butcha, 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 shake ya butcha, shake that kuti kacha. Um, so she invites Carly on the damn stage. To twerk, I. Carly was trying to twerk on stage. And then she does the coochie, coochie thrust. Damn net. Really? Anyway, though, Carly Red was trying to. She was trying to twerk. But, no shade, I was just saying she was trying to, she was trying to twerk. So, the last scene, all the ladies, they at this table, you know, getting all comfortable, got some drinks and shit. I'm guessing they finna eat some Jamaican food. They just, you know, chitter-chatting shit up, you know what I'm saying? And here comes motherfucking Jock, an old girl, whatever the fuck her name is, Old girl that was, uh, that used to fuck around with married men or some shit. I don't know. I forgot her damn name. But y'all know who the fuck I'm talking about. I mean, shit, if y'all watched tonight's episode, you know exactly who the fuck I'm talking about. So don't be getting no motherfucking attitude, bitch. Get the fuck out of here. What the fuck you think you doing? Huh? Excuse me? Shit. Hell wrong with you. I don't know if the damn screen just black out or whatever. Anyway, though. That was tonight's episode of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. It's a whole bunch of shit that's about to pop off on next week's episode. All the guys in Jamaica and shit. Uh, Carly Red getting on jock ass about all the shit she put her through. Jessica's supposed to get his proposed to and shit. That looks all beautiful and romantic and shit. You know, it's a whole lot of shit going on. All I know is that the last part of the preview that they showed, that bitch that came with jock, 
That bitch getting her weed pulled and probably getting knocked the fuck out by Jessica damn dying. But we gonna see all that shit next week, well, next Monday on a new episode. So, bam. So, this was my motherfucking review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 12, Jamaican Flavor Man. Bow, bow, bamba clock, bamba, bamba clock. You know what I'm saying? Watagwan, watagwan, cha cha, boom cha, yunka, yunka, bow, bow. I'm not making fun of no Jamaican people, don't get me wrong. So, this is my first damn review. So, I, like I said, I hope you all enjoy this shit. And, um, I will see y'all with another damn review whenever. See what other shows and shit is coming on. But, yeah, so please give this video a thumbs up. Like that motherfucker, okay? Subscribe to the damn channel because I will show up. Give y'all more motherfucking videos. Uh, comment. Because, like I said, I'm going to be doing reactions as well. So, please leave some uh, comments and let me know what you would like me to react to. I can do some try not to laugh, some shit, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Let me know and I will watch that shit. Please do. It's like I said, subscribe to the channel. Share this shit on Twitter, fucking Facebook, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I want to do these reviews and stuff because I'm inspired. I'm inspired by Forrest Rocks, uh, Ashley Miller, um, Sweet Addictions TV, uh, with Candy, um, Funky Dineva, a lot of people. So, you know, I'm going to give this a try, and I know I got a long way to go. But, hey, I, I, I would love to start, uh, have a fan base and, you know, have a little platform here. God willing, you know what I mean? So, like I said, like, subscribe, favorite, and that's it. No, I'm just playing. Shout out to Pickle Boy and Bridget, by the way. But, uh, yeah, so I'll see y'all later. Like, share, especially subscribe, and I will see y'all. In the next. Amen.